Today, we're going to talk about my recent first visit to Disney's Hilton Head Resort. That's coming up on this episode 387 of WW Prep to Go. Hello and welcome to WW Prep to Go, we talk strategy and ideas for people planning their Disney World trips. I am your host, Shannon Albert from www.prepschool.com. Thank you for being here for episode 387. Today is going to be a trip report about my own trip, which is um, an annual holiday trip that we do as a team. We have a lot to do on most of our trips. We go into every trip with to do the a to-do list of information to collect, pictures to take, video, articles to write, podcasts to produce, social media posts, etc. And this is the one trip every year where we don't go in with all those things to do because it lets us have fun and remember why we got into this in the first place. The one exception I'm making this year is that I kept notes throughout the trip so I could do a podcast afterwards because it was all new to me. And I thought I want to pass on some of the things that I've learned in case you have been contemplating a trip to uh, Disney's Hilton Head Resort. Before I dive into the details of that, just a reminder to follow on social media. We are most active on Facebook and Instagram. If you would like to follow there, including Q&As that we do there. If you would like to ask any questions about planning your upcoming trip, we are glad to help you out there. Just search WDW Prep School. Okay, so let's talk about Disney's Hilton Head Resort which is about, I think, a five-hour drive from Orlando. And it is also is very connected to Disney World and Disney Systems. So it's almost like it is a satellite resort from Disney World. And by being integrated into their systems, I mean that when they send emails, the header and footer say Disney World. When you link the reservation in My Disney Experience, it's through your Disney World account. When you get a first visit button at the resort, it's a Walt Disney World button, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very connected to Disney World in that way. They have signs on property at the resort that say how many miles to the Disney World resort. So it's just like a, it's a satellite out there about five hours away. I rented points. This is a villa resort, a DVC resort. Most of the people that go there are owners, DVC owners. I am not. So back in February, I sent a request to uh, DVC request, the company that used to be called David's DVC. We are partnered with them. When people ask us how we recommend booking DVC points, that is what we recommend, but it's also what I use usually about once a year. And obviously this was a great opportunity to do it because I am not a DVC owner. So back in February, I put in a request for a two-bedroom villa. So we would all have enough beds plus a kitchen and laundry and all that. And the availability was there. So we got it booked back in February. We are traveling because we were there the first week of December. We were traveling during a very low crowd time. Like it's right in between different busy times of year. And in fact, I want to say that on the low end, the studios are like six points a night this time of year. The DVC point charts all the, go all the way from six points a night to during their busier season, they look a little bit more like a Saratoga Springs or Old Key West, which is still on the lower end of points. So if you have DVC points that you own, you they can go a long way at this resort, depending on the time of year that you are visiting. But we were during a very unbusy time. So availability was easy and the cost was low, relatively speaking. So that was back in February. I did link it in my Disney experience. So it appear in my account. So it was right there along with all my Disney World reservations. The online check-in was available just like it is for Disney World. So I did that. Mobile check-in or where they text you to say your room is ready was not a thing there. I was hoping that we would get a text while we were like at the airport or something and we would know our room number, but we had to physically go to the front desk for that. A lot of similarities with Disney World, but it's not all 100% the same. Once we had the resort booked back in February. We then looked at uh, flights. The airport is Savannah. So it is often called Savannah slash Hilton Head. And it's about one hour away. So we all booked flights into Savannah, 
Normally, we would all fly on Southwest. It is my preference for many reasons. And But one person in our group, they didn't have Southwest as an option between their home city and Savannah, so they had to book on a different airline, but we all got there, no problem. Savannah Airport is very cute, very decorated this time of year for the holidays, um, has all basic amenities, um, a few places to eat, and a handful of baggage claims. So we didn't have any issues there. The first snag, though, that we ran into was with the rental car. I had booked it through Costco Travel, which is my favorite way to book rental cars because they the prices tend to be the most competitive. And it was through budget. I'm used to booking through Alamo, but I don't think Alamo was there as an option. And it was about a one-hour process, even though I had already booked it ahead of time, pre-registered, entered all my information. I thought that would save some time, but it was like a 15-minute wait in line, and then it took 10 or 15 minutes just standing at the desk, and then we had to stand nearby and wait for the car to be brought out. So it was about an hour, and it seemed like everyone was doing that, so that must just be their process there. But once we got our car, then it was a one-hour drive to get to Disney Hilton Head Resort. At this time, because of the delays, I knew we were going to miss the 5 o'clock campfire at the hotel. I had read online that it was only available during our trip, which was Monday through Friday, it was only available on Monday. And so I'd really hope to get there for that. I assume it is very similar to what they do at Disney World Resorts, where they have the campfire and the the s'mores right there. So we just wanted to be there for it because it was the only time it was going to be available. However, we arrived too late. We got there and checked in at the front desk. Everyone very friendly. They gave us so much information, like about the resort, but also just about the area, Hilton Head Island area including magazines full of menus for the restaurants there. And so we had lots of information and options about where to eat. One of the first things that we saw was a place that looked really good. I looked up the reviews and I was like, let's go there this evening. So on this evening, on our arrival day, we really needed to get some food and drinks, but also get some basic groceries for our villa. But since we were going to have drinks, I was like, hey, let's take a lift. So nobody has to worry about driving. And there was one for $4.50. So we all got into the lift and headed out. We had dinner at, I think it was called Riley's Pub. And it was a gorgeous night. So with with the heat lamps on, it was perfect. And we had some good food and drinks. We walked next door to a place called The Boardroom where they had live music. Again, had another drink. And then we thought, okay, we'll walk to a nearby grocery store before calling a lift back. We walked to the grocery stores, one of them, and it had just closed. So it was like 10.02 p.m. and they had closed at 10. And we were surprised at the hours. We didn't expect them to be closed this early. But right next to the grocery store was a Walgreens. And so we thought, okay, we just need basic stuff. So let's go in and get our some snacks and drinks. And then we will call a car to come and get us. So at 10.20 p.m., we got, came out of Walgreens with some basics, including things like a case of water, and some hard seltzers, and some food items, etc. It was not a ton of things, but it was too heavy for us to just be walking around with, or else we would have walked back to the resort ourselves. So imagine our surprise when we opened the rideshare apps. We tried multiple, and no cars were available at 10, 20 p.m. None. So we all had Uber and Lyft and all different options we were trying. There was just nothing available. And we even called the taxi company. They had nothing until midnight. And keep in mind, this was 10, 20 p.m. when we first started looking for a car. And so we were like, no, surely we're going to find something before midnight. It was not until over an hour later that a car picked up in like Lyft or Uber apps. And the only reason that he picked up was because he had taken somebody from the Savannah airport to Hilton Head And after he dropped that person off, he was pinged to come and pick us up. And so we got back about midnight with our groceries in tow. And we learned an important lesson, which is that the island shuts down much earlier than we are used to. And so we learned to not count on right share, at least after a certain time, um, starting that night. The hotel itself is so much like Old Key West. The, The rooms especially had the exact same layout. Um, They are being refurbed right now. We got an older one. Some rooms are completed. It was our estimation that maybe half of the buildings seem to be under construction, which makes sense that they would be working on this time of year. 
when things are less busy, the rooms definitely did look, the room that we were in, the two-bedroom villa, did, definitely did look outdated, but that won't be there for long. So we'll see how it looks post-refurb. But there are rules on Hilton Head Island for how everything has to look and everything has to be a neutral color. So it doesn't take away from the nature of the area. But because of the consistency of the businesses on Hilton Head Island and the kind of like custom road signs and how beautiful everything was and the bike paths that were everywhere, the whole island to me felt like it it could be part of a Disney resort because it was just beautiful and consistent. And I don't know, it just felt really beautiful and more refined than you would expect with that kind of consistency amongst businesses. So while we did love our resort, we also just really love the island itself. What else to mention about the resort? The cast members were fantastic, and many of them have been there for a very long time. So we had a really good first impression. There are views of water, but it is not on the beach. So we had marshy areas on one side, and uh, I don't know what it's called on the other side, but it's not the ocean. It's like an inlet or something. But so we had water views, but not ocean views because the ocean is a few minutes away. I'll get to that more in just a minute. So overall, really good first impression, Even but we were re- really frustrated by our rideshare situation. So we got settled and got back around midnight and we had to rest up for the next day because we had some plans to go out on the water on a 90 minute pontoon boat ride, which is called Dolphin and Donuts. Basically, they go to a bakery and get a box of donuts and bring it on the boat. And you can pick bottled beverages from their refrigerator at the store there. And then they take you out to go see dolphins, which is my favorite way to see animals is in their natural habitat. But it's not necessarily just about the dolphins because it's a great view um, along the way. And the boat captain was able to point to lots of like fancy houses and buildings and explain all the things to us and it was i think if you're going to go to hilton head island make sure you get to go on a boat ride at least once it was fantastic to do the boat ride the weather was gorgeous jackets were definitely necessary with the wind coming off the water but totally doable and then we did get to see lots of dolphins that was a very fun little boat ride once we got back we ate at the restaurant that's right there next to the boat docks Again, I'm not going to go restaurant by restaurant. I'm just going to say we had no bad food. It is like upscale, southern feel with seafood, lots of fresh seafood, understandably. Great drinks, great service overall. I understand why Disney's Hilton Head Resort only has quick service and why it cuts off at 5 p.m. Because the island is full of options. So we have had we had really great luck. So after lunch, we decided to head to Disney's Beach House. Now, I just told you. The resort itself is not on the ocean, but the way that you get to the beach is that you either take the shuttle that the resort provides that goes to and from the beach, or you can drive. Now, we had no problem driving over there because we had a rental car and because it's not a busy time of year, the parking was plentiful at the beach house. I understand during busier times of year that people don't necessarily like to drive over there because the parking lot gets so full. So in that case, the shuttle might be an easier option. But we drove over there and there was nobody there, I don't think, when we were there. And we were able to just walk out on the beach for a bit. Really beautiful. I think it's private. um, So I don't know that it ever is rowdy in the way that a public beach might be. There was signs for no alcohol. The hours were pretty limited. It's a gorgeous beach. So I think it's I think it's pretty private and secluded probably lends itself to being very family friendly as opposed to being like a party space. But anyway, it was beautiful. I'm glad we were able to head over there. Obviously, if it was a warmer time of year, we would probably spend more time doing that. But at least we got to see it. And then we headed to dinner near our hotel. There was a shopping center and it had lots of great shops and lots of great restaurants. And there was also some Kroger in this area. So it was it's a very handy space to have visited. And again, just like upscale, southern, great service, et cetera, et cetera. But we headed back and just spent the evening at our hotel afterwards. But it was a great first full day for sure. Then the next day, 
we had breakfast in our at our hotel. There's a walk up window at the quick service there, so you can walk up and get food that is packaged to go. You can either eat it at the tables that are right there near the walk up window or take it back. We did both, but they have the breakfast things that you would expect at a Disney World resort, including Mickey waffles and the bacon that they're known for and all that. So that was delicious. Some people did choose to get refillable mugs, which should be a familiar thing to Disney World guests. It's available at this resort as well. So we did start with breakfast there at the hotel. And then we decided to drive to Savannah, which, as you'll recall from our arrival day, is about a one-hour drive. So we headed there. I want to say we arrived around noonish, like between 11 and 12. And we had trolley tickets. So there's a trolley in Savannah that has 15 stops where you can hop on, hop off the trolley. We had mixed feelings about the trolley because it it was unreliable at times. And we had one time where they made us get off the trolley to get on another trolley. And we sat for 20, 25 minutes before it left. And so that part was frustrating. I, I, depending on what your goal is in the Savannah area, you might be better off just walking, especially if the weather is nice. Um, and we did have nice weather. So we might have been able to get away with that, but we didn't know exactly how it was going to work. So we had this trolley and we made stops at a cemetery and we stopped to go along the river and we went up to a rooftop at a hotel with great views of the city and had a drink. So we just did a few different things there. And then we went to a tiki bar that was very Christmas decorated so well for Christmas. And that was fun. And then that night we had a history haunts and hops tour, which is a walking tour. And you with your pre-purchase ticket, you get three drinks included, alcoholic drinks, and you get to walk with a tour guide and they talk about the history of Savannah. The reason you're able to walk around with your drinks is that Savannah allows that. Like New Orleans allows that. And a lot of like touristy areas will have those rules where you can walk around with your drinks. So we were able to walk from point A to point B with drinks and talking about the history of Savannah, which is very complicated and interesting. And so I was glad we were able to incorporate that into our time. But it was time to go. And we had a one hour drive back to our resort. So we got back somewhere around, I think, 11 o'clock at night. I will say, as the person who did most of the driving, I loved driving during the day to go to Savannah. It's like gorgeous, the trees and everything. At night, I didn't like it as much. I found the visibility to be hard and there were deer alongside the road. So that was a little scary. I was really trying not to hit any deer. So I didn't really like that commute at night, but loved Savannah. I completely fell in love with it. For our next day, which is our last full day, we decided to stay local on Hilton Head Island. We headed to the once again, to have lunch at a, an amazing restaurant, which did not disappoint. And then we went to the Hilton Head Distillery. We spent a couple hours in the afternoon. You can choose from their menu of different things to taste. They have a lot of different rums in particular, and you can order cocktails there. So we just hung out there for a bit. And then we headed out after that to go back to our hotel because we had not done the hot tub or anything in the swimming pool area. So we threw on our swimsuits and got in the hot tub and ended up talking to some people that were just hanging out in the hot tub. I think we were there for three hours. And most of the people seem to be DVC owners. The people that we talk to go there multiple times a year. So they're very in love with this resort and drive in. I think everyone we talked to was from Tennessee and they drove in from there. So very popular amongst many people. And I was glad we got to talk to them. At one point, all of us who were in the hot tub ran over to the water slide and we went down the water slide. And obviously it, it and you end up in the pool at the bottom of the slide. As a person who's very sensitive to cold water, I didn't find it uncomfortable, even though the temperatures outside were only in the 50s or maybe low 60s, but I think the 50s. So it was pretty comfortable. We didn't see a ton of people in the pool. But if you wanted to, you definitely could. And so that was the, that was the last thing on our last full day. And then the next day, 
once again had breakfast at the resort and then headed to Savannah for the flights home. And that was that. Overall, my thoughts are that Hilton Head Island is like an upscale Southern feel where the main demographic, at least when we were there, but I'm going to guess it's year round, is like active seniors. So there's a lot to do, but things did shut down earlier than we would expect. So we really enjoyed the food and the beauty and how nice everything was. I did have a regret about not riding a bicycle because the whole island is very bike friendly and people do often get around on bike. They have paths just for that. And so if I were to go back, I would definitely be renting a bike. But overall, I love the island and the resort and came away just completely in love with that. Also completely in love with Savannah. And in fact, if I were to go back, I would probably stay a whole week and I would split between the two. I didn't really like having the back and forth drives multiple times in our fairly short trip. So I think I would spend a few days in Savannah, a few days in Hilton Head and get the best of both worlds because there's definitely enough to do in both spots to justify that length of a trip. So anyway, overall, fantastic. Glad we got to go. It will not be our last. And hopefully if you've been considering Hilton Head, that information is somewhat helpful to you. I think that will wrap up this episode of WW Frets Go. For more information, please check the show notes in your podcast app or go to the website www.prepschool.com. Click on podcast at the top. Scroll down to episode 387. Until next time, I'll see you on the site.